Hello everyone, this is Professor Robert Solis. Welcome to this next video lesson. Uh, we are going to work on example number three, where we're still dealing with functions, and you're going to create a circular cone calculator. Namely, you're going to determine what the surface area and the volume is based on the parameters that are going to be given to you. And as you can see over here, let me switch back over here to Windows, um, here are the parameters that you need to be able to determine what the surface area is and also what the volume is. Here's the height of the cone, here's the radius, and here's the length. So what would be cool is for me to take this picture and to put it into my Visual Basic uh, form. So as you can see, I've just gotten started over here. I think what I'll do is I'll use the snipping tool. So first let me go back over here to Edge. And then there's a program called Snipping Tool. So let me just type in S-N-I-P, and there we go, Snipping Tool. And it just simply allows you to grab a part of the screen. So I'm going to say uh, this is a rectangular snip that I want. I'll click that. And let's see if I can get from here to right over here. Try to, to make, try to make this as proportional as possible. That looks pretty good. Let go. All right, so I like that. Let me take this. I'm going to save it. So what I'll do is I'll just simply say File, Save As. I'll just put it onto the desktop. That way, that way I know where it is. And we'll say this is a, a right. Actually, this is a, uh, I'll just call it a cone. It's a PNG file. That's fine. Click Save. I don't need the snipping tool anymore. Let me go back over here to Visual Studio. And I'd like to place a picture of that cone right here. So that means using a picture box. This guy over here. So I'll drag and drop a picture box over here. And uh, let me go ahead and put the image inside here. And then I'll go ahead and arrange the size position. So over here, notice where it says image for this particular picture box. And I have this button over here that allows me to search for the image that I want. Um, I have to import this because it's on my desktop. So I'm going to go to local resource and I'm going to import the actual image. So I click over here on import. I know it's on desktop. And sure enough, there it is, cone. So I'll click open, and so there's the cone. Let me click OK, and so here we go. Now, this shape is not correct, and it also doesn't match the size of the cone, but I want this, I don't want it to be this big. I want it to be a little bit smaller. So what I'll do is I'll drag down over here to the very bottom where it says size mode. Right now it's normal. If I were to select zoom, say for example, then no matter how I change this, it changes the image and it changes it proportionally. I like this one. Uh, I don't like this one over here where it says stretch because then it might distort the image and that doesn't look good. Maybe for other types of images this would be appropriate. For, for this one, I don't like that. So I think I'll stay with, uh, with zoom and I want to put this up here and let's see what happens in terms of, uh, that's too small. Um, maybe something like this. That looks pretty good. I mean, definitely I can see the H and the L and the R. So I think I'll leave the picture box like that. And then I'm going to take this button and I'll make it a little bit bigger. Something like that. And how about we use the word calculate back? We're always using the word submit, but let's just change it up a little bit. We'll say calculate. Something like that, because after all, this is a, a cone calculator. So that means I'm going to have to change the form. Text, we'll say cone calculator. And then what I want to do is I want to place the results down here. So I'll just simply take one of these labels, copy and paste, move it over here. Let me go ahead and put this thing into auto size false mode. And then we'll say something like this. And uh, instead of the word height, It'll say surface area, something like that. It's pretty good. And then what I'll do is I'll place another label over here that is going to contain the result of the surface area for this cone. So I'll just take this guy, copy and paste it. So copy and paste. And uh, I want to place a border around this guy. So border style, we'll say fixed single. So you can see what it looks like. And uh, maybe I should move this more like towards the center, something like this. I, can, I think I can get this closer over here. Yeah, that looks good. Surface area. Actually, you know what? I don't even. I, actually, I don't have to have this in um, auto size mode. I can have this 
in auto size true. I should say auto size false. I don't need to have that. I can just put auto size true. That way I can get this thing really close to here. Something like that. That looks good. And then uh, for this guy over here, we're going to get rid of the text. So I'll go over here, text, delete. Pretty good. Um, I think what I'll do now is I'll take these two over here, copy and paste. So we'll say uh, copy, paste. Oops. Copy, paste. There we go. And I'll move it underneath here. Something like that's fine. And this will say volume. And because that's so far away here, I'll drag that a little closer. Looks good. Reduce the size of the form. I don't want the minimize or the maximize. If you want those two buttons, that's fine. You can keep those there in place. Looks pretty good. The next thing to do would be to give names to the various items. So what I'll do is I'll select this text box. That's going to be txt height. This is going to be txt length. And txt radius. Obviously, that'll be btn calculate. And we'll say lbl surface area. And lbl volume. Let me double check my work so my eyes are over here. Uh, txt height, txt length, txt radius looks good. BTN calculate, LBL surface area, LBL volume. Good, so I've given names to everything. Let me go ahead and save my work. I don't need the toolbox anymore and I don't need the properties panel anymore because I'm about to double click on the button so that I can type the code. So let me double click on the button. This is the code area. Before I get started, I want to go ahead and make these two functions that I'm mandated to create. It says over here that you must create a function called calculate surface area and another one called calculate volume. And it says function. So I start off with that word function and we'll say calculate. I think it's a calc surface area. Now, notice over here that um, both of these functions require parameters. Well, if I ask what are the parameters that are required, uh, let's see, it looks like I'm going to need for uh, surface area, I'm going to need the radius, and I'm also going to need the length. It looks like I don't need the height. So just the radius and just the length. Okay, so over here, we'll say by val, give me the radius parameter as double. I also need another parameter, uh, specifically the length, as double. Now, this thing is supposed to return something, namely a double. Yes? Uh, if you don't, uh, is it required to put by valve, or if you don't, is it by default? It's by default, yeah. Now, we do that because we want to be explicit and let the programmer know that when I receive this, I'm receiving a copy of it. So if this were by ref, then that means I'm receiving the original. So it's good to put this down so that way you are explicitly stating how you are receiving this parameter. And I'm getting that green squiggly underline because I haven't returned anything yet. Well, I'm about to as soon as I um, return or calculate what the surface area is. So what I could do is I could say uh, create a variable called surface area. And we're going to say that this is a double, which means it's a real number. The surface area is going to be, well, let's go back over here. And, oops, I'm sorry. Let's go back over here. And it looks like it's going to be pi r squared. So we'll say math.pi times, well, r squared, that means I can use the power function. So the power function has a base and it has an exponent. So over here, it says it's supposed to be the radius squared. Okay, well, I've given to you the radius, so I can say radius parameter, comma, and then 2.0, because notice over here it says it requires a double. So we'll put 2.0. If you put 2, no big deal. The compiler will change it to a 2.0 for you. Okay. All right, so that takes care of the first part of the equation, plus, and it says over here, pi rl. Okay, so math.pi 
times r, which is the radius, times l, which is the length, which I gave to you up here. So now that I've determined what the surface area is, I can simply return that, whatever the surface area is. This required three lines of code. I kind of like doing stuff like this because it makes my program readable. Do I have to do it this way? No, I could have done this. I could have just simply said return, and then the mathematical result of this equation. So I would just simply copy this, paste it over here. I could have just done this. Oh, sorry, let me put a space right here. Um, and just put everything into one line. Uh, one way is not right, the other way is not wrong. It's just a preference. Um, typically, I strive for readability so that when I come back to a program, I can see you know, what my steps were. So I might be tempted to do it this way, but this is perfectly acceptable as well. Okay, so you have a function that determines the surface area. Now let's do the same thing for another function. And I think, what do we want? It looks like we want to calculate volume. Okay, so hit enter a couple times. Function calc volume. Once again, I'm going to need parameters to be able to determine what the volume is. Let's see here. Uh, actually, I think I have it on this browser here. It looks like for the volume, that's going to be 1 third pi r squared h. So it looks like I need the radius and I need the height of the cone. Okay, so we'll say um, bival radius parameter as double by val, and what else do I need? Uh, the height. So we'll say height parameter as double. When I'm finished, I'm going to send back to you a double, namely the volume. Okay, so I think I'll use this more consolidated approach uh, since you've already seen me do the other approach on breaking out line by line the calculation of the surface area. We'll do one line over here, so we'll say return now, what is the volume formula? It says one third. So since this is a double, I'll say 1.0. Actually, I'll put parens 1.0 divided by 3.0. So that's one third. And I put that within parentheses so that it's not going to confuse. Like, is that going to be three times something? No, we'll do the one third right off the bat. I put the parentheses to force it to calculate that first. Then I'm going to multiply that times pi. So times math.pi times, and it looks like it's r squared. Well, I know that that's the math.pow function. And the math.pow function, I have to put a base and a radius. I'm sorry, a base and an exponent. Looks like the base is radius. Looks like the exponent is 2. So we'll say radius parameter, comma, 2.0 is the exponent. All right. And then the next thing I multiply times the height. So this times the height parameter. That's it. So we were able to fit everything into one line. When I call this function, um, it's going to calculate the volume if I give it the radius and if I give it the height. OK, so now that I've finished this, I can go back to my main program and use these two functions that I've just created. So I'll go back over here. And let me start off with some comments like declarations, get user input, calculation, and then finally output. In terms of the declarations, um, you ask yourself, what is it that the user is going to give to you? What is it that you're going to give back to the user? Well, the user is definitely going to give you the height, the length, and the radius. So dim height as double, dim radius as double, dim length as double. Okay. For sure, I'm getting those. I am going to be giving back to the user the surface area and the volume. So we'll say dim surface area. And also, oops, double volume. It may very well be that I have other parameters that I need to create, other variables that I need to create, I should say. Um, I don't know yet. We'll see what happens. So let's go ahead and obtain the user input. So over here, height. I'll say convert dot to double, whatever is inside of the text box, height dot text. And then we're going to do the same thing for radius. 
and that's going to be convert dot to double txt radius again the text property and then of course the length oops and we'll say convert dot to double txt whatever that length parameter is okay now that I've determined or now that I've obtained I should say those values I can calculate surface area and surface area is simply going to be a call to calc surface area. So I call calc surface area. What do you need? You need the radius. Okay, so I'll send you the radius, comma. What else do you need? You need the length. Okay, so I'll send you the length. Once it obtains that, it's going to return a double and place that into the variable surface area. Now let's do the same thing for volume. Well, I have a function that I created called calc volume. There it is. What do you need? Looks like you need the radius parameter. Okay, so radius. And next, you need the height. So I'll send you that. When you're finished, you are going to put the answer into volume. Well, now that I have that, I can place those values into the labels. I have LBL surface area dot text. Now, let me do this a little bit differently. Let's say that I only want two numbers after the decimal point. Um, what I can do is I can use the variable surface area dot to string. Within the to string, I can say give me a total number of two digits after the decimal point. So I can format it a little bit differently. I could have also done this. I could have said lbl surface area dot text is going to be a convert dot to string and then uh, whatever the value of surface area is. Um, here I have formatting control. Here I'm just simply going to output whatever the conversion is and however many numbers after the decimal point. I'll comment this out so that you can see both options. Next, I have LBL volume dot text and I'm going to use volume dot to string. Give me two numbers after the decimal point or whatever you want. Save my work. Let me run the program. Okay, so we've started building the program slowly, slowly. Here we go. All right, so let's say that I have a height of 2 and a width of 3 and a radius of 3. What would that be? Okay, so this is the answer. Let me double check my work. So let me open up the calculator. So here's the calculator. And let me scroll down here to where the uh, formulas are. So I can use those. And uh, I'll go back over here. There's my calculator. And here it is. Let me go back to my calculator. Here we go. All right. So it looks like for the surface area, that's going to be pi. OK, so don't I have a button here for pi? Yes, I do. So that's pi times uh, the radius squared. And it looks like the radius is 3. So times 3 to the second power equals. And then that's going to be plus, and then this multiplication over here. So let me do this. Let me uh, store this in memory. So I'll say memory plus clear, and then I'll take care of this part over here, which is uh, pi times the radius, which is 3. So we'll say times 3 times the length, which it looks like it's 3, so times 3 equals, and then that's going to be added. So I'll add this to memory, and then I'll memory recall. It looks like it's 56.5, and if I round that up, 5, so 56.55. So that's good. That calculated correctly. Let me clear this, and let me uh, clear the memory. All right, and then let's go ahead and determine the volume. So it looks like it's uh, 1 over 3, so 1 divided by 3, which is, of course, going to be 0.33333. Uh, we multiply that times pi, so we'll say times pi equals... Uh, we multiply that times uh, the height parameter, so we'll say times uh, the height parameter is 2. And then we're eventually going to multiply that times this. So let me see, what is this equal to? And let me store that in memory. So we'll say memory plus, and clear the screen, and let me determine what radius squared is. So it looks like it's 3 squared, so 3 times 3 is 9, and that's going to be times whatever I have in memory. So I'll do a memory recall equals, so it looks like it's, um, wait a minute, that's not right. I think I did something wrong with my mathematics here. <laughs> so what did I do this? 
let me take care of this part first, and then multiply times everything else. Uh, actually, I looked at the wrong formula. Sorry about that. This guy right here. Uh, so let's see here. Um, radius squared. That's 3 squared. So we know that that's 9. Times. Uh, the height. That's 3. Times. Um, pi. And then finally, times uh, 1 divided by 3. 28. Oh, that's... That's weird. Hmm, did I do something wrong? Sorry about that. Let me just try it one more time. 1 divided by 3 equals times pi times uh, the height parameter, which is 2, times, and then r squared, and if r is 3, 3 squared is 9, so I'll just say 9 equals 8. Okay, I guess I did something wrong in my previous math. Well, you were multiplying at the end of the last one, uh, one-third. Oh. Uh, it, it, I don't know if you put parentheses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can. Uh, I'm not sure because you did times, you wanted to say times one-third. So I multiplied one. <laughs> and, uh, so that, that's a lesson of what not to do. <laughs> when working with your calculator. But, but that's okay, you know, we got to do this as software developers. We got to double check our work. So yeah, good eye, Gustavo. That's exactly what I did wrong. 18.85, 18.85. Okay, good. Now I can I can breathe. Uh, so let me close this program. And um, this is a great illustration of using functions, creating the tools that you need to make your main program, which in this case is a BTN, calculate, click, event, making it as small as possible so that you let the functions do their work. Okay. So this is Professor Robertson-Lease. I hope this video lesson was helpful. Have a good day. See you next time. Mm -hmm.